What is up, rockers? Welcome back to Rise of Kingdoms. Today, we are going to talk about civilizations and their special units. We are going to tackle which special units is the most beneficial for you. <laughs> So rockers, currently we have Britain and um, we're going to go first according to the letters. So first we're going to talk about the archer special units and then we are going to talk about the cavalry and then infantry would be the last one that we're going to talk about. So first we're going to talk about archers since I've been playing with archers most of my time. And um, the two archer civilizations that I have been with is Britain and also the Ottoman Empire. Now, I've been with Britain for a very long time now, and I'm going to explain to you why is that. Now, I have a chart here for all the archers. As you can see, with tier 5, we're only going to look into the tier 5, because at the end of the day, that's what matters. Now, tier 5 and tier 4 stats are relatively similar if you're doing a comparison between civilization or between special units. I want to highlight the two main special units for Archer, which is going to be the Elite Bowman and also the Elite Yanisari. Now, if you are looking into this chart, what you can see is that the Bowmans will have a higher damage than the Yanisaris. Now, the big difference between these two is that Bowmans are high damage Yanisaris are going to be a higher health, meaning their longevity is higher there. We should also take a look into the Horangs and the Chukonu. Now, the Horangs are very, very high in defense. If you're looking into the stats in here, that's what they are good at, is defense. So if you're playing more of a defensive game in the structure, let's say um, you are playing with Artemisia, this may benefit you because you are playing into the defensive role. Now, for China, what you can see in here is that they don't really have the best of everything in here. I mean, their attack, you know, the Bowman's going to have a higher attack. They have a higher defense, but honestly, Korea has a way better defense. And um, the difference between the Chukonu and the Huarang is that this one is a higher attack compared to the Huaran, which is a higher defense. But look at the health of the Chukonu. It's only 212 compared to the Bowman and, you know, the Huarangs, which is pretty much the same. The, you know, the thing that highlights in here is the Yanisari. So honestly, for me, I don't see anything too special with the Chukonu. To me, they're more of a balanced stat sheet if you're looking into that. One is not too great than the other one. Now, we got to also think about the civilization buff. If you are picking a special unit, right, it comes with a civ buff. Now, with the civ buff, if you're looking into the Britain, like I've mentioned earlier, we have stayed more of the time on Britain. The reason why is that being at the caliber or at the gameplay that I've been playing with, which we train a good amount of troops, for me, it's very, very beneficial to have the troop training speed by 5%. So if you are a spender and you train a lot of troops, this is, might be something that's beneficial for you. Now, the allied garrison capacity, that's pretty much not unnecessary. What's great about with the new commander that we have, which is Ramses, is that with the archer plus 5% attack, it's going to amplify my normal attack as well, which is really amazing. Now, to be honest, you get more buff by playing with Ottoman if you're fighting in the open field. Honestly, you get the HP plus 5%, you get the active skill damage, and you get the marching speed. All of this translates into the battlefield. So, if I am going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I would say Ottoman would be much, much better than Britain. But if I'm looking at the long-term scenario, which I have to use my speed ups to compete, Britain would be the best option. Now, another thing also, the playing style. What you need to understand, if you're a free to play player, perhaps the Ottoman Empire might be great for you if you are fighting a lot in the open field battle, right? Well, majority of you free to play would probably be doing that. That extra marching speed bonus would definitely benefit a lot for you. 
because then you can evade some of the opponents, you can run away, enter a structure, and hide. So that's one of the things that can benefit you as a free-to-play player with Ottoman Empire. But also a free-to-play player can as well benefit from Britain because of the training speed plus 5%. Anything that you train will be reduced and it will be a lot quicker, right? So you have to think about your playing style. All I can say is that for my playing style, I don't really march a whole lot. So for me, marching speed is not that important because I usually just play in a short distance fighting. Now with the new KVK and they changed some of the rules here with the ancient ruins that we can only send one march in, and fight in the open field battle. Now, this may be a hindrance for me if I don't have a good marching speed. I may slow down, right, with my archers. But also you gotta think about that the marching speed also affects every single troop. So, even if you have a cavalry unit, it would still benefit you because this is a troop marching speed for every single type of unit. Now the takeaway here is that even though I am going to be having a difficulty here with the marching speed, it's only 5% in my opinion. And the majority of the time, the most benefit that I am going to get from this civilization is really the training speed. That's the most beneficial here for me. And as well as high damage. So I'm a player that really focuses on a lot of high damage. And um, I build my equipments for my commander into a higher attack stats therefore it would just make sense for me to stay with the elite bowman i've you know played around with the thought of switching into the yanisaris but i think in the long term gain for me the britain would be the most beneficial for my playing style so let's take a look into the cavalry units in here with the elite teutonic knight they have a high hp moderate defense elite conquistador has the highest attack and um, really kind of low on defense and as well as the HP. If you look into the Mamluk, it actually has a pretty decent setup on stats in here. It's a little bit more distributed. Nothing is like highest among the others, but it's actually just pretty even. Elite Cataphracts, as you can see in here, it has the highest defense among every special units. Now, you can't just consider choosing a civilization just basically on the special units because the civilization buff will definitely enhance some of these stats as well so you have to pick to decide here what is also the best civilization buff well if I'm looking into this if I'm a cavalry player I would honestly pick Germany over anything else now if you are a pay to win then the Arabia would be the best if you are performing rallies, the Arabia would be the best option for you. Honestly, you get a lot of benefits for this. You can either switch this during battle mode. Let's say during KVK, you switch to Arabia. And during rest period, you are in Germany. That's something that you can do as well. Now, with Arabia, as you can see, it has plus 5% attack and also plus 5% rally damage. That is insane. The buff that you're getting from that civilization is just absolutely insane. Now, for the free-to-play players, you may want to consider Germany. Germany is an absolute 100% my recommendation for every free-to-play players in the game. Cavalry attack plus 5%, and you also have an AP recovery speed plus 10%. This is amazing. That extra 10% for you to grind barbs or defeat barbarian forts or even for Kairouac event this is going to help you a lot. And also you have plus five training speed. In the long term gain, you would really see a lot of benefit from Germany. You may say, oh, you know what? Um, I wanna take a look into the Spain as well. Now, Spain is great. Uh, Spain is focused more on the defense, but you know, cavalry are more into the attack, honestly. Your commanders are more on attack than defense. So it just makes sense to focus on attack and going for Germany. With Spain, you get extra XP bonus and also you have resource production. But honestly, in the early stages, your resource production is not going to really benefit you. So if you are going to pick a sieve in the beginning, I would really recommend to just start with Germany instead. Now, we shouldn't forgot about the Byzantium. Now, honestly, with the Byzantium, I don't really see anything great about it. I mean, you have the hospital plus 15%, but 
Honestly, if you just pay attention in your hospital, I mean, yeah, in KVK, you can fight a little bit longer and you have a little bit more leg room for that one. But honestly, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I think Germany would just be the best option for you. Now, let's um, talk about infantry in here. There are three special units here for the infantry. This is going to be a little bit easier, in my opinion. Um, if you're looking into the Japan, Japan has the highest attack. And the France has the highest HP, if you can see over there, 227. And if you look into the Legionnaire, they have a relatively high defense. So majority of the infantry commanders, they have high defense. All right. Majority of your infantry commander are very, very tanky. And um, they don't really deal a whole lot of damage, except for Alexander the Great. So if you are probably running with Alexander the Great, you may say that Japan may be the most beneficial for you. But honestly, if you're looking into the stats of the civilization buff, that Rome would actually be the best option for you. Majority of you are going to be the free-to-play players and you're going to fight in the open field battle. The benefit of two things in here in the open field is infantry defense and marching speed plus 5%. Now, this allows you to move in and out, evade, catch up, especially if you're using like a Charles Martel, where you have some marching speed bonus once you max it up, and as well as Alexander has a marching speed bonus as well. Honestly, you get a lot of benefit from Rome, and um, like I said, it's a high defense, right? Your your goal, you have to understand, if you're running as an infantry, your goal is a tank, not as a DPS, unless... We do have Guan Yu, which is a DPS commander, but honestly, the still the primary role of a infantry commanders are defense. So when you have picked Rome, it would really benefit you a lot, especially if you are defending into structures. Let's say you have like a Constantine, a Richard, Martel, and you're defending on structures like these with these commanders. This is going to definitely benefit you with Rome civilization rather than Japan. Honestly, with Japan, I would say it is more of a starter civilization because you get that plus 30% scout. But honestly, if you are going to start from the beginning, I would just go for Rome. I know you do get that civilization change in the level 10, I believe, but you can just use that for a later game. And if you ever want to switch something else rather than just switching from Japan to Rome, because what I would recommend to you is that just go for the cheaper way. Now, if you truly want to finish your scouting within the map in the beginning of the game, then go for Japan. It would definitely help you out as well and gathering speed as well. But if you are a whale or a player that is a high caliber, I would say in the end game, you should be going for Rome. Now, previously on some of my videos, we've actually recommended Japan to be your starter civilization. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with Japan. Since you will have a civ change anyway, you can always change it up from Japan to Rome whenever you are ready. Now, another benefit from the high attack from Japan or the Samurais is that whenever you have a commander like Charles Martel, which has a shield. Now, the damage factor will help you with your shield. But honestly, I just feel like Rome would just give you much more long-term benefit. So we tackle a lot of great things in here. Let's just do a summary. My recommendations for Archer is Britain. My recommendations for Cavalry is Germany. My recommendations for Infantry is Rome. Now also, what I want to show you real quick in here is go to your city hall. I think a lot of players don't understand this or don't even know. Some of you guys may not know how to look at the buff. So when you actually click your, I'm not going to click this though because I would collect it. But if you click into your your uh, units in here and then you can see the stats, there's going to be a plus there, which is the buff of your um, units. You can go to the city hall, go to the military buff, and you can calculate the buff that your units are getting. And you can see where it's coming from as well, as you can see in our stat sheet in here. For me... As you can see, I have 141% attack for the cavalry, 138 for infantry, and for archers, I have 140.5.
and you can see the benefits that we got. You can get it from the KVK buff in here for the solar and lunar buildings, holy sites, alliance technology, item, Civilize because I have the buff open right now. I have a 5% attack boost right now. So civilization feature as well Technology camp technology past glory and VIP so you get a lot of information within your city So make sure you make use of that now that you understand what the special units are in rise of kingdoms And I've given you a lot of great information here to help you start off in rise of kingdoms You are now ready to start your journey in rise of kingdoms as a true rocker. See you again next time and good luck and keep rocking on. Bye.